Hey, this is Oasis with eMiniPlayer.net, and uh, this is a recap for Wednesday, May 8th. And uh, in this video, I'm specifically going to focus on some lessons learned from a losing day. So uh, today happened to be a losing day in our account, and uh, you know I wanted to go over some specific lessons that we can take away from that. And uh, hopefully, you know that serves as education for everyone else, and perhaps you can incorporate some of the ideas into your own trading. And uh, it also highlights just how important execution really is. You know, going over the trade plan, going over the ideas from the day, I think what you'll walk away from is also realizing just how important it is to um, not only have a good trade plan, but then to properly execute that trade plan, you know, the focus required to do it. Um, you know, so let's, let's get into it. So before we jump into the charts, let's uh, review our trade plan heading into the day. So overnight, we found uh, responsive sellers at uh, yesterday's high, and then buyers at 1618. And the only caution sign we had heading into the day was a small divergence between ES and NQ, where ES made a new high yesterday, and in the overnight session, while NQ failed to make a new high yesterday and overnight. But uh, you know, the plan highlighted that this small divergence could be erased quickly, but you know, something to keep an eye on if the sellers are gonna press today. On the upside, we had initial resistance at uh, 16, 1975 to 2175, and uh, in the plan, we highlighted that that was a key area for continued upside. So a breakout above 1621 would confirm initiative buyers active in the market and bring the 1625.75 and 1629 half to 1631 half resistance into play. So if we're long, we're going to look to take profit. At 2575 and 29 half to 31 half, um, you know, of course, there's no solid resistance up here, and uh, the short ideas are based on um, exhaustion setups into resistance. So, you know, if we're going to short, we ideally want to see a volume and a tick spike as ES approaches 29 half to 31 half. So that means that you know the tick spike doesn't have to happen right into 29 half. It can happen a little bit ahead of it, and then ES kind of drifts off because uh, typically. With the tick extreme setups, you know, you get a tick extreme, but then price actually continues a little bit lower before reversing. So you don't have to enter right on the tick extreme unless, you know, it happens to be at the zone and you're getting a tick extreme. Um, you know, if you get it a little bit ahead of the zone, typically you'll get the tick extreme and then price will typically follow, uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit of follow through before it reverses so you can improve your entry. So that's really the point that I'm trying to highlight on uh, you know this specific line over here uh, downside we had 12 half to 14 half support and uh, we were going to gauge the strength weakness of the market in real time to see if that's a good zone to go long and then below that we had the uh, 08 half gap 1607 to 1609 uh, bull bear zone now the plan also highlighted that as the markets continue to push up to new highs a lot of traders are trying to nail the top and uh, there are two ways that you can play that you can either short on exhaustion moves into resistance and that would be the aggressive route or you can wait for failure at a resistance zone and then once you see the aggressive sellers in the market right like you actually see a failure then you short the pops and uh, that's the more conservative route and then similar to yesterday where we're going to judge the strength weakness of the market in the morning and then decide whether we should be long for new highs or short down to the 08 half gap and uh, heading into the day, I was cautious on the long side. I felt a risk reward. Uh, favored sellers at 1975 to 2175, just because a failure at that zone would bring the 08 half gap into play. So I felt that, you know, on the upside, their target's 29 half. But if you're shorting 2021, on the downside, your target's 08 half. Um, you know, so there was a little bit more room on the downside. Um, we were going to use the opening range to establish our short term directional bias. Uh, bigger picture, we're aware that buyers are still in control. But short term, the idea was that this could go either way. And uh, that's an important point to keep in mind when we jump into the charts. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is the opening range chart, 2500 volume. Uh, we can see that we open at 19 half. ES pushes up to 2075. And uh, we actually got short at uh, 20 half right on this push up you know got short at uh, 20.5 and it was purely a risk reward play right so over here when we're entering short 
it was purely a risk reward setup. We didn't wait for confirmation. You know, we're practicing what we preach. Um, didn't really look for any real time read, uh, except that, you know, the internals were negative off the open and uh, right off the open, it didn't look like S&P was going to break to new highs. Um, you know, if you look at the intraday breadth, you can see that uh, S&P AD is quite depressed below zero. Even the NYC AD, VIX is heading higher right off the open. So, you know, the signs were there, at least right off the open, that, uh, you know, this thing is not going to rocket higher. And the risk reward was there. So this was purely a risk reward play that, uh, you know, even if it works 50% of the time, you know, the times you win, um, you're winning big, right? Uh, we were shooting for, even on our first scale out, our target was uh, around 13 half to 14. And uh, our final target was going to be 09 ahead of that gap. So, you know, very decent risk reward. And our stop is right here at uh, 22, right? We don't want this going out to uh, new highs above the overnight and above this resistance zone. So two point stop and uh, you know on the profit side obviously we're looking at you know potentially six points on the first scale and uh, then the 08 half to 09 out. Now that trade in itself even though it was a losing trade wasn't a bad trade right the risk reward was there the idea was okay the mistake we made on this trade was let me jump in opening range again um, now the mistake we made was that once ES came down here, and this 18 half by the way is the overnight uh, VPOC, and it rejected it, and then went up and started going through 21, we didn't look to reverse the trade. You know, um, if you recall from the trade plan, the idea was that this 1975 to 2175 zone is an inflection point, that the market can go either way, and if it breaks above 21. The idea was that we would tag 25.75 first, and then 29.5 to 31.5, right? Those were the upside targets on the day. So really, the execution mistake was that once it made this move, we uh, certainly, you know, we obviously, our stop got hit. We got out of the short, but then we failed to get into the long side. Now, you know, why did we fail to get into the long side? We're basically getting stopped out, you know, right over here, right, on this push up. And ES pulls back just a little bit, but not really enough for us to pull the trigger on the long side. And it happened very quickly. I mean, this is a 2,500 volume chart. It's a pretty fast paced chart. So by the time that we wanted to actually enter long, ES is already trading above 22, right? And our first target is 25.75. So in order for us to get long, the price that we could have actually gotten was around 22 half to 23. That's where we, you know, kind of finally could have pulled the trigger and gotten long and uh, kind of over here somewhere. The problem at that point is that my first target is 2575 and my stop on this um, has to be near, you know, the opening range low, 19. And ideally even a little bit below that. So I'm looking at a potential three point stop and my target in this case is, you know, roughly two and a half, three points away. So the risk reward is just not very good on the setup when I can execute it, right? Now, ideally, what I should have done is once it starts breaking above here, right, above the opening range, the trade plan specifically said, use the opening range to establish bias. You know, you've come down here, you've rejected the overnight VPOC, you've gone up here, and now you're breaking above 21. I mean, really, at this point, anywhere over here in this range, I should be reversing the trade. So that was the main execution mistake um, that we made today and, uh, you know, ended up costing us something like two and a half points or something total. And, uh, you know, so not really a big losing trade or anything, but it's not just the fact that we had this losing setup. I mean, that's perfectly fine, right? I mean, everyone has losing trades and that's part of the game. So, and that was a valid trade, you know, no um, regret there. The problem on this thing was that we failed to get on board on the long side, even though we had targets at 25.75 and 29.5 to 31.5, we just didn't pull the trigger fast enough to get out of this trade and then get into the long setup. And, uh, you know, that eventually ended up costing us. Now, our next trade was actually at uh, 26 quarter. So let me just go ahead and plot that here. So our next setup was once ES was balancing in this range 
and you can see that it established the VPOC at 26 quarter. You know, we looked at uh, the other markets, we looked at TF, and uh, we looked at the internals, and it, at the time, it didn't look like this was going to continue the initiative buying to the upside, at least in the short term. So we entered short um, after lunch at 26 quarter, so kind of somewhere around here, and um, you know, let the trade work out because you're entering at the VPOC, you know there's gonna be chop, right? It's not just gonna work out immediately. And knowing that, you know, you can prepare yourself and sit through that. So we basically sat through this whole chop over here, and our target on this, on the downside, was uh, 23 quarter for a scale out, and uh, then 21 area, kind of, you know, this zone again, for a final exit, where we were gonna actually reverse our trade to the long side, and play the bounce in the afternoon. Because obviously, you know, we're not expecting this thing to just completely fail now and make new lows. Um, all we're looking for is a rotation down back into this 21, 22 area, right? And then we do still expect this to hold as support now, broken resistance acting as support, and then push it back up towards 24 quarter to 26 quarter. In this case, the mistake we made was um, we took a scale out at 23 quarter, but in this event, you know, considering that the whole day was directionally up, I think it made sense to simply take the entire trade off at, uh, you know, this 23 area, because if you look at the one minute chart, you can see that, uh, you know, coming into this 22 half, um, S&P AD is testing kind of the zero line over here, but you're also getting this tick extreme, right? You can see that we got this negative 854 reading on this tick low. And then like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, usually that doesn't mean the low is in. Usually you get a little bit of rotation, then another low after the tick extreme. And uh, you know, we got that over here. And that's usually when, you know, price uh, turns around. And even this one is uh, on a negative 740 tick reading, right? So this is short term exhaustion into support. And uh, at the same time, you know, NQ was hitting its support zone, basically hitting the midpoint and bouncing off of it. Um, you know, in any case, we had enough reason that since we weren't looking for, you know, a complete breakdown of this uh, entire day, we were just looking for 21s. Um, I think it made sense that we should have just, on those, you know, tick extremes and exhaustion moves, we should have just exited the entire trade. Instead, we ended up taking uh, a scale out. We exited half the position over here for three points. And uh, then once it popped back up, uh, you know, our stop was above the high of day, right? The high at the time was 27.5, and our stop was above that because we didn't want to just tick it and go at the time, right? We were thinking it could just balance here. And, uh, of course, you know, we got stopped out of the remaining half. So it ended up being kind of a scratch trade overall, right? We made a little bit of money on it, but, uh, you know, not a whole lot. Certainly not enough to uh, even cover this small loss from the morning on our full position, um, now, if we had taken the entire position off, uh, it would actually be a profitable day. But because, you know, we don't take these small um, kind of these automatic scale outs, right? It's always inflection point to inflection point. Um, and we thought that, you know, 21, 21 half would get tested. We ended up holding it, um, you know, for another about two points we were looking for on our remaining position. And we were actually going to reverse there. So I think the idea... The takeaway or on this little trade over here is not that you know you want to always kind of take your whole position off or uh, that you know it was wrong to do this I think the idea was that because we were looking to reverse and go long here anyway I think it made sense to be a little bit conservative on our short target and uh, especially given the NYC tick extreme and exhaustion into it on a pretty directional day to the upside that at the minimum you know, we cover the entire position here and then see, you know, try to get long at 21, 21 half, but, uh, you know, certainly cover that here. So if we had done that, I mean, technically today would be a small profit instead of being a small loss. Um, but, you know, no big deal, but I think, you know, it does give us some lessons and uh, that's really what you want to focus on. You know, some days you're going to have where you do everything right and uh, you end up with a loss. Well, that's unavoidable. It's going to happen. But other days you're going to have losses, but they're going to give you some lessons. They're going to give you some key takeaways that you can use going forward. 
And again, you know, the mistake here was really just that it was an inflection point, and the plan clearly highlighted that uh, if it breaks 21, it's going to tag 25.75 and most likely 29.5 to 31.5. And you can see that that zone held to the tick. We touched it and then rotated down. Um, so over here, instead of being kind of passive, and just letting the trade work and you know just kind of because of the risk reward we should have been more active we should have been more focused more aggressive and uh, you know really on this bar up once we got this wide bar on the five minute chart you know really we should be reversing the trade right over here at 21 half 2175 and then shooting for 2575 as a target that way you know at least you're getting four points on your first scale out and uh, you know you're getting in with a relatively tight stop, you know, two and a half points or so. So in any case, um, you know, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope some of the lessons can be used in your own trading. Um, again, losing days are going to happen. That's part of uh, this business. You know, if, you're, if you've been a trader for any amount of time, you know that they can't really be avoided and you shouldn't really focus on avoiding them because when you do that, when your mindset is focused on avoiding losses, Usually that means that you're not going to press your winners and you're not going to be getting into the really good trade setups which look scary in real time but work out really well um, you know, once uh, you get in them. So you, know, you can't be in like loss avoidance mode. You have to always be thinking about opportunity, kind of keep that positive mindset and uh, you know, overall that's what's going to give you a consistent edge to be uh, profitable over time. Now heading into uh, the overnight session we're going to be using this 24 quarter to 26 quarter as uh, the first support area on any pullbacks, uh, you know, down. And uh, below that, we're going to use the 20 quarter to 22 quarter as support in this zone right here. And uh, this one I expect to hold on first test, um, at least in the overnight. And um, if the market is still pretty bullish, then I think 24 quarter to 26 quarter will hold as well. Now, bigger picture, I think we are running into some uh, resistance areas where there's a higher odds chance that uh, you know the market can be exhausted to the upside, at least short term. So I think that as we continue to push higher, the risk reward is going to start shifting and going more in favor of sellers, right? I mean, no one knows obviously where exactly the top is going to be, but the higher you push on these lighter volume days, um, especially when you have you know internals like these where you know the internals are very mediocre for a directionally upside day so when you start seeing this kind of stuff you know lack of broad market participation um, it just kind of gives you an early signal that you know the top might not be in but it's something to keep an eye out for uh, it might be right around the corner you know within one to two days maybe a little bit more but you know short term I think that uh, you know 1635 1632, um, you know, those areas I think offer pretty good edge on the short side, um, especially in the overnight session. So that's what we're going to use as resistance overnight, 1630 to 1632, and uh, the 1635 area as resistance. So if it gets up there in the overnight session, I'm expecting uh, sellers to be active for a push back down towards 2627. All right, guys, I hope everyone traded well today. Um, again, I hope the lessons are helpful and uh, we will catch up in the morning.